This sounds like the woman of my dreams. Growing up in Siberia, tough as nails. What is your message to young people today that are complaining when their phones don't work or they don't have uh, Wi-Fi? Never complain. Never. Welcome to the Spartan Up Podcast with Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan Race. We are talking about overcoming obstacles. The same way we teach people to get over obstacles on the course, we will teach you here on the Spartan Up Podcast to get over obstacles in your mind. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by FitAid. Race dirty, recover clean with FitAid Sports Recovery Drink. Visit lifeaidbevco.com and enter the code SPARTAN15 at checkout to get 15% off FitAid. Joe DeSena here, CEO and founder of Spartan and the Spartan Up podcast. This is probably going to be my favorite podcast ever here. Um, I've got a special, I've got two special guests, Babushka <laughs> from Siberia. I probably didn't say it correctly. And Jesse Kanzer. And uh, Jesse and I met in a previous podcast and she was bragging about grandma, Babushka, and how she survived the Holocaust, lived in Siberia, and I started to get like really hot and bothered, and I was like, this sounds like the woman of my dreams. She grew up in Siberia because her family, the reason she survived the Holocaust, this I think you'll find this interesting, is because two weeks before Nazis invaded Latvia, a little town in Latvia where she's from, where I was actually born there, she, um, her family was sent away by Stalin and Stalin's people to the Stalin camps in Siberia. Under Stalin, you know, like 20 million Russians died in the Stalin camps, and and her whole family was deported to Siberia. And then two weeks later, the Nazis invaded and killed her entire extended family. But they were luckily surviving in the camps of Siberia. Growing up in <laughs> Siberia, tough as nails, and, um, and then with all the stuff going on in Russia, I couldn't think of a better couple of guests. So welcome. So, so what was life like in Siberia? You know what? You will be maybe surprised, but I will say that it was good because I was young. My children were with me. I was married in Siberia. My, I loved my husband. He loved me. I couldn't complain. But the hard time, it remains in my bones. I think that's a great lesson for people that are listening or watching is um, when I ask the question, how... How was life in Siberia? What was it like? And you said, you know, it wasn't so bad. I had a husband that loved me, right? You said you had your children. You were young. Yeah. And, and I think sometimes uh, when our world is falling apart, and this is so terrible, um, is it really that bad? Somebody said to me once, somebody said, you know, there's no bad weather. There's only bad attitude. I agree. What is your message to young people today that are complaining when their phones don't work or they don't have uh, Wi-Fi or they don't like the string beans or, or broccoli that their mother made for them for dinner. What is your message? Never complain. Never. Which situation you don't like, it can be worse. And... Don't ask for words. Be glad what you have. Be satisfied with everything what you have. Because one day, maybe you will see it like a happy time. Because it can be words. You see, today... Maybe a couple of days ago, some people were not satisfied with their life. But today, when the bombs fall near them, they would laugh. 
the time when no bombs, no casualties. My message is every time be satisfied what you have today. My favorite saying is it could be worse. And whenever I'm upset or miserable, I say, well, I could be dead. I'm not dead. But you're, you're specifically referring to the Ukraine. And maybe there were some people, I'm sure there were some people, 44 million people there that were saying, oh, I'm not happy with my relationship. I'm not happy with my apartment. I wanted a new car. And then when the bomb started falling, they forgot about all that. They wished they had it. Yes. I agree. Uh, Babushka, uh, just for a little backstory, Babushka lived pretty peacefully in a little town in Latvia when she was a child. It was, um, a, you know, a regular town for her time, her generation, uh, a Jewish town in Latvia. And then Russian soldiers came in and Russian people took over. And then, you know, what happened with World War II and Nazis. So... I think she looks back, you know, she shows me pictures from her childhood and it, it was happy until worse stuff started happening. And I think it's very, it's pretty traumatic to watch that go on in the world right now. And it reminds us of what is important. What is important and, and how happy you should be. I think there's a Buddha, I believe there's a Buddha saying, right? Happiness is wanting what you have. Yeah. And you know, it's so funny, she's talking about contentment. And you know, my book, Don't Just Sit There, Do Nothing, which we talked about, which in which Babushka is thanked. Uh, you know, there's a chapter, actually, we talked about that too, the Tao of Babushka. That's how Babushka got here. But it's interesting because that's what Taoism teaches as well, that discon there's no greater tragedy than discontentment, the Tao says. You got to want what you have. So, so you then, you had this perfect um, situation growing up. Everything was nice. We lived in this nice town. But then you got moved to Siberia. Yes. During World, World War II. You just got picked up and brought. How far away? Uh, 5,000. 5,000 miles. Yeah. yeah. Babushka, tell, tell Joe the story of how, how the soldiers came in, because she told me this story recently. It was a peaceful night. And nobody was thinking that it is the last one in this place and the last one together, all family. In the middle of the night, a very loud uh, knocking. knocking in the door and voices wake up. You have an hour to take your clothes and went out. I was eight years old, but I remember it still now. And she didn't see her father after that for how many years? Six years. Six years he was in it. They didn't know if he was dead or alive, but they put him in... No, we did not know nothing. I was thinking... Why had you to wake up us in the middle of the night? It was only one uh, explanation to make more uncomfortable, to make it more painful. So I, I don't think anybody listening or watching could even imagine, right, being woken up at one in the morning and ripped out of your house. You have one hour to get your family and your possessions together, and then you're gone 5,000 miles away. And, yeah. and what, happened, what happened when you got to Siberia? I didn't understand all the dramatic uh, meaning of that, but... In the same time, I didn't see any more my father, and we didn't know where he is. And only maybe in uh, six months, or I don't remember exactly now, we find out that he is in a camp. And, you know, 
Hope is the last thing to die. And we hope that it will be a day and we will see him. We saw him in five years, maybe, maybe five years. So she said that um, they were moved to Siberia. Uh, there were other families there because um, a historical lesson here is that millions of Stalin's people were sent to Siberia uh, during his reign. And so they did know some people there. But however, her father, who was put in a Stalin camp, was there for years. By the time they saw him, he was he had been injured because the work there was so brutal. And he was a cripple until he died at a very young age. She's outlived all her relatives, all of them. It's amazing. She and I love I love the sentence she used. The last thing to die is hope, right? Yeah, and that you know obviously we're all thinking now of what's going on, you know, in Ukraine with those people being attacked by a different dictator. But it's interesting because you could see when you watch right when you watch the clips of what's going on, you see that there's hope in in the people that are on the ground defending themselves. And I'm sure I was thinking of you, Joe, because I was I thought I'm sure I'm sure Joe finds those people inspiring because I'm sure that if you were in their shoes, that's what you would do. I am so inspired by the Ukrainian president and, um, and his ability. Like I love the sentence when the United States said, do you want us to extract you? And he said, I don't need a ride. I need anti uh, tank, (laughs) you know, ammunition and, 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 and equipment, missiles and so forth. And, and, um, that really inspired me and the people of Ukraine, just just holding firm against all odds, kind of like the Spartans, right, against yep. the Persians. Yep. And um, I think the whole world is getting uh, chills and exciting, uh, mo- you know, and, and excited uh, regarding what's going on there as far as their fortitude and their resilience. Um, it's terrible, obviously, but, but um, it is inspiring at the same time. Uh, there's one thing I want to share real quick because I, that made me think of Babushka as well that um, I've been following because, of course, I understand the language. I understand a Ukrainian. We, we, Ukrainian is very close to Russian. A lot of them speak in Russian. And I've been following some of these actors, They're, you know, some of these TV hosts, all of these people that were formerly, you know, artists are now taking up arms and defending their land. They send their kids away. Some of the, even some of the wives, some of the moms came back. They sent the kids away. They came back and picked up guns and they're defending their homes. And one of uh, these folks, I thought you would like this quote. I read it in Russian. I translated on my social media so people could read it in English. He said, a man is not just born the day his mother gives birth to him, but he is forced to be born by life over and over again, born anew to himself. How does how does uh, Grandma how does Babushka uh, how does she feel about this whole thing uh, happening right now? We'll be right back to this interview, but first a quick word from FitAid, today's sponsor. Why do you race for the glory, for the honor, for the FitAid? Every ice cold can of FitAid contains ingredients to help your body recover. It never contains any artificial flavors or sweeteners. FitAid is the clean sports recovery drink. It's 45 calories, certified non-GMO tested, vegan, paleo-friendly, certified gluten-free, kosher, and it never contains artificial colors, flavors, sweeteners, or sodium. And FitAid now comes in a zero-sugar option that's keto-friendly with only 5 calories. It's naturally sweetened with monk fruit and stevia. The recovery blend has glutamine, glucosamine, turmeric, BCAAs, omega-3s, CoQ10, a full B complex, and electrolytes. It's perfect for after your race, at the gym, hiking, or biking. Find FitAid at your next Spartan Race finish line, or go to lifeaidbevco.com and enter the code SPARTAN15 at checkout to save 15% off. That's lifeaidbevco.com and the code SPARTAN15 for 15% off, plus fast, free shipping. Now back to the interview. How does, how does uh, Grandma, how does Babushka, uh, how does she feel about this whole thing uh, happening right now? Not like many people's. I was ready for Putin to make 
such decision, his core is KGB. You know what? If he will not be stopped, he will go further. further. He has to be stopped because he is a sick man. And um, what she's saying, because, you know, he, so for folks who don't know, um, Putin was in the KGB uh, before the Soviet Union fell. He was part of the KGB. The KGB was this very powerful organization that spied well, on I over. think everyone knows. I the think KGB. you think you think Babushka thinks everyone knows what the KGB is. <laughs> um the system was so rough and so brainwashed it's such a brainwashing system that yeah. anyone who came through that system pretty robotic, pretty cold and then with time as the power of that individual grows, their humanity almost disappears completely and that's what we see yeah. here now. Um and uh, we do have friends in Latvia. We have, you know, that's where we came from. That's where I was born in Latvia because Babushka went back to Latvia from Siberia. She was determined. I asked her one time, why did you go back? You know, your family. And she said, it was my home. So it took her many, many years, but she did go back to her homeland and eventually did not get better there for us. And, you know, we left here, but mm -hmm. our friends right now are running from Latvia. They're leaving. Those who can are leaving. They're scared. Because they're afraid mm. that Ukraine isn't able to stop Putin, the other former republics will can will fall Be to the next. Same. Yeah, right. I guess. I guess. Why? Why would you stop? I guess. Right. If if it was easy and you took the Ukraine, then you just keep rolling through. But as we're seeing, they're not making it easy. They're not making it easy. I got to hand it to the Ukrainians. Well. I'm in love with Babushka. I think the whole audience, the whole sport and audience is any anything that I miss that we should cover. I mean, we should all be learning from her and not complaining about anything in life. You know what? I have two opinions on this thing. Complaints that uh, don't help, and you can help only for yourself. And doing something, not other people. You have to have a very strong opinion that you can overcome everything. So you got to have a very strong opinion and, and, and a will to overcome adversity. And, um, and complaints don't do anything. It doesn't help. No. That's been her philosophy in life. And she raised me, so I would know. You know, my parents, when we, <laughs> when we would, you know, when we came here, they had to work their butts off. That's, and so Babushka was raising us. And it's funny because I would complain sometimes, clearly. <laughs> and she would not have it. And to this day, she's like, that's why you're strong. That's why you're like this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think all the Spartans want a little bit of that tough Siberian Russian attitude. We like it. What's her favorite food? What's your if you were gonna cook for us right now, what would she make? Potatoes. Grated potatoes. Grated, Grated potatoes. Potatoes is oh, a big like, staple. <laughs> that's like a, a hash brown almost. Right, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Is that a is that a common Russian food? It is my left foot. I don't know. It is no. It is more Belarusian. Belarusian, more Belarusian. Yes. She just loves it. She just likes those fried. I potatoes. like it <laughs> from childhood. Babushka has made it to almost ninety years old. She's outlived everybody. She survived horrific crimes globally and Siberia. What? does she recommend we do every day? Do we drink more water? Do we do more push-ups? Do we eat more potatoes? What, should, what does she recommend? Love yourself and love your uh, children. I think that love is everything for everyone. And when you asked me what helped me, love. I love the people who passed away, but I love the people who remain. 
Love yourself. Love those around you. Love life. Love what you have. And we love you. Everybody loves Babushka. Love people. And sometimes animals. <laughs> <laughs> love people love and sometimes animals. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're the best. We're going to make a t-shirt. Spartan loves Babushka. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know someone who needs a little help staying motivated, staying informed, getting or staying mentally and physically resilient? We're here three days every week with a mix of content to help you stay strong from mindset to nutrition and everything in between. Listen every Tuesday to hear Joe DeSena, Spartan Race founder and CEO, and the rest of the week, join us for DECA, Endurance, and Classic episodes. See you next time. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by FitAid. Race dirty, recover clean with FitAid Sports Recovery Drink. Visit lifeaidbevco.com and enter the code SPARTAN15 at checkout to get 15% off FitAid.